Hey, Village Heights family. We hope you had a Merry Christmas and no animals, children, or adults were hurt in the unwrapping of craziness and all the gifts and everything. And it, I'm sure it was fun. Yeah. Know. Yeah, so we hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I'm sure you did. But we wanted to come to you guys just to reconnect with you, you know, right after Christmas. And, uh, and even if you're not part of Village Heights and you're joining, thank you for joining. We appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we wanted, we wanted to give you something going into the new year, yeah. right? Since we can't be yeah. together in person today, um, we wanted to have this quick little digital gathering that really will set the tone for the new year ahead. Oh, yeah. um, so today what we want to talk about is New Year's resolutions, which is what everybody talks yeah. about this time of year, right? This week leading up to New Year's, everyone's like, hey, what's your resolution? But today we want to take it a step further. We don't want to know what your resolution is, we want to know what your plan is to keep your resolution. Because yep. resolutions yep. usually fail by, what is it, February, March? Um, if that. If that. If that. Two weeks into the new year, yeah. resolution down the drain. Yep. So we want to talk today about intentionally setting resolutions that we plan to yep. keep. And what is the track? What yep. is the plan to make sure that we're keeping those resolutions that are meaningful? And I guarantee, if you do this, it will change mm -hmm. your next year. Yeah, money 20, back guaranteed. Yeah, 2022 will be totally different than 2021 if you will just go by these yeah. six, six things. Yeah, so six things. All right, what's right. number so one? So number one, are you ready? All right, write this down. Here we go. <laughs> six steps for keeping your New Year's resolutions. Boom. I feel like we should have like a drum roll. Number one. No, just imagine that. <laughs> okay, here we go. Number one, understand that you can't, but God can. It's not our willpower but it's about what God can do through us. And in fact, in Galatians 2.20, it says, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The strategy to keeping resolutions is understanding that we don't do this alone, yeah. right? And so usually we pick things that are bigger than us. And so sometimes if we're doing something that's bigger than us, we need the one who is actually bigger than us, mm. who created everything. And so do not forget, it, having dependence on God can make or break a resolution. Yeah, I love that. Okay, number two, give your life to God's will. Always start with the why. We love that, you know, that line of thinking that Simon Sinek, I think, really coined in today's world. Yeah. Start with why. Why is it so important to give your life to God's will? Because it's easy to ask God, where do you need me to change? But then the hard question is to ask, why yeah. do you need me to change? What's on the other side of that change? And you know that I love the book of James. And in James chapter four, verse three, he says, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. So if we ask that question, God, what do you want me to change? Where do you want me to change? But really, why? What's on the other side of that change? Following Christ means deciding to live in a way that pleases Him, yeah. where we're centered on whatever you want, God, it's all yeah. for your yeah. glory. Because whether we want to believe it or not, His will is always better because yeah. He sees all, right? Yeah. Which takes a great step into number three, and that is take responsibility for your past. That one hurts. Yeah. <laughs> but a part of being a Christ follower is being a leader and being a leader is taking responsibility for things. Mm -hmm. um, because what keeps us from what we want to live in the future is what we've lived in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of the times in church and a lot of when I preach or Hannah preach, we talk about baggage. Mm -hmm. And there's things that we drag from year to year. We don't let them go. Yeah. We don't take responsibility for them, even if they're not our fault. If we would just take responsibility, we can let go of that baggage so it doesn't slow us down going into the new year. And if you have trouble moving on, ask God. Just ask Him. I mean, just plain and simple in prayer at night, just yeah. say, Lord, I can't get past this. I'm now taking this baggage and handing it to you, God, and watch what He does with it. Yeah. So number four, that really does flow straight into number four because so often our baggage is centered around things that we've done to others or others have done to us. So number yep. four is forgive and ask to be forgiven, which is really never easy on either side of that coin. Right. Ephesians 4.31 says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander. 
as well as all types of evil behavior. Simple enough, right? Just get rid oh. of all of those things that easy. feel so good and are so easy to lean oh. into. <laughs> Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Um, so taking that baggage yeah. and really, if you imagine a suitcase, unzipping it, unzipping it yeah. opening it up and going, all right, what's in here? <laughs> Who do I need to ask forgiveness from? Yeah. Who do I need to forgive? Yeah. Get rid of all of that junk and move forward. It's like going to baggage claim at the airport and they're like, it's too heavy, I'm sorry. <laughs> you gotta crack it open in front of everybody and pull some of the dirty laundry out. Okay, that's, yes, that's You've never exactly. had to do that. I have I have. I've been there to witness it. Like I've, I've seen it, I've seen it happen. Okay, you're down. Number five. <laughs> which number five, which helps in, in, in this process is number five, stay connected to God and others. Mm -hmm. Include God and a few other friends in deciding your goals, yeah. your, your resolutions for the year. Because the strategy for living out a new you is probably connection. Mm -hmm. You've been doing this alone and you shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Who are you being accountable to? Who is, if you don't reach that goal, if you don't you know, hit, hit whatever stride you're trying to make, who's asking you yeah. if you're making it or not? Who's helping you along? Because sometimes, you just need some encouragement, right? And so staying connected to God and bringing those to Him, you know, making not just a, a connection with you, but a covenant to God, a connection with Him, and then also with your friends. I mean, having some real accountability will change your life. Yeah, and there's something about intentionally pulling in yeah. the right people mm -hmm. and then getting outside of yourself because number six is help others connect to God in your pursuit of him as you're um, seeking him, but then surrounding yourself with the right people. What are you doing beyond yourself to be a little bit more selfless and to help others connect to the, to the joy and the grandeur yeah. and the beauty and the wisdom of all of who God is. This is what it says in Galatians 6 to share each other's burdens. And in this way, obey the law of Christ. And that really is something that we do well at Village Heights, yeah. um, that we can very easily identify burdens and struggles and heaviness in others and find ways to live life together, to lean into one another, to use each other as strength when we yeah. are completely and totally weak. Yeah. But more than anything, to arm in arm, side by side, seek after God and watch all that he's able to do in us and through us in our pursuits of these yeah. resolutions, that they're not just something we want to set, yeah. they're something we want to keep. Okay, so number one, understand that you can't, but yeah. God absolutely can. Number two, give your life to God's will. Number three, take responsibility for your past. Number four, forgive and ask to be forgiven. Number five, stay connected to God and others. And number six, help others connect to God. I think a key part of this is what you just said in the last one is helping others reach their goals. You will find it, it's almost a, a relief when you realize I'm not the only one who's struggling, right? Yeah. And so at Village Heights, it's one of the things we say, if you come here for perfect people, you gotta find another place because it's not here. Yeah. We're just a bunch of people following Christ mm -hmm. who are not perfect and trying to just figure it out together. We're going on a journey and we're gonna get there together. Mm -hmm. And so we encourage you to do the exact same thing this season. Yeah, so part of that is, hey, start volunteering at Village Heights in 2022. Yeah. Start giving at Village Heights yeah. in 2022. Set a resolution to be in church at yeah. least every other week in yeah. 2022. What are you doing in this house to ensure that you're staying connected to God, yeah. that you're living in his will, that you're yeah. leaning into the people he's put around you and see what happens in the new year ahead. Yeah, and as you help other people meet their goals, just watch how closer it will get you to Christ. Because yeah. that's his heart. Right? He loves people and he loves you. Mm -hmm. and, as, and the more we help others reach their goals, the more he helps us reach our goals. Yeah. And we do it together. Yeah. So as you enjoy these yeah. last few days of rest and relaxation yeah. and yeah. Take peace and quiet yes. around the world, yes. um, we can't wait to see what God has in store for your life. So we love you, yeah. Village Heights. We believe in you. We're excited to see God's purpose for you unfold in this new year. So before we go, let's pray for you 
and then know that we can't wait to see you again in person in yes. 2022. So yes. let's pray. Jesus, we love you, and we are so thankful for all that you do in and through your people. God, thank you for this church, for this gathering of your people who can strengthen one another, encourage one another, invest in one another, and watch what you do through your economy as you bless and multiply in each and every one of our lives and in your church as one family, one body working together. So God, we love you. We thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for the new year ahead and every single beautiful thing you are about to do in your people. So God, it's always in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. See you in 2020. No, 2022. <laughs> Village Heights. <laughs>